So people keep on asking which camera should I buy and which camera is better for me if I do this or that. The reality is that I can't answer that. This is something you have to decide for yourself based on your needs, preferences, and budget. But I do hope that this video will make the buying decision a little bit easier. This is not a comparison video, but rather a use case video, a simple guide to help you make the best buying decision based on your needs. And I've not only been testing these cameras, but also using these cameras for a very long time now in different scenarios like traveling, hiking, riding my motorcycle and spending time with my family, diving and so on. So the range is pretty wide I would say. But let's find out which camera is better for you and it also helps that some of these cameras are now on sale which could mean that you'll end up buying more than just one. But let's start with the uh, image quality. So out of the box the Pocky 3 has the better image quality in my opinion, followed by the GoPro 12, the Ace Pro, the Action 4, the X4, and the Go 3S, and then we have the X3 Lost. But in reality, it doesn't really matter which of these cameras you get because all do a great job in capturing your moments. It's rather how you want to capture them, like do you need Star Trail, do you need HDR video, do you need 10-bit, and so on. The Pocket 3 has a 1-inch sensor, which is the only 1-inch sensor out of these cameras. It also has a mechanical gimbal, cinematic features, and three different focus options compared to the fixed focus which we see in the other cameras. But the majority of people looking to get the ultimate all-around travel camera for their needs, the Pocket 3 is not waterproof and I assume that this plays a huge role in your buying decision if you're planning a vacation and you also want to do some water activities like snorkeling, paddleboarding, surfing or any other water activity for that matter. And when it comes to the image quality, there's also a few factors to consider. The first one is the price versus what you get and what you need. The second one is where you'll be uploading your videos. And the last one is what type of audience do you have? Is it yourself? Is it on YouTube? Or maybe it's just friends and family. Uploading videos to TikTok, Instagram or YouTube Shorts for example, it doesn't really matter which of these cameras you get because the footage will look good anyway and the majority of people watching these short form videos will see them on the smartphone which will always look good. And when it comes to the X3 versus the X4, the X3 is now on sale. So $100 off globally and in Europe 140 euros off. So if you've been waiting for a discounted price on the X3, now is the time to get it. Now, even though the X3 is considered old now since we have the X4, it's a fantastic camera and has been my favorite travel camera for two years. The X4 is, of course, the better of the two, but it's not said that you need to start with the X4 just because it's the latest 360 camera on the market. The X3 is just as fun and will give you the exact same 360 experience, but with slightly reduced image quality. And for 349 US dollars, it's definitely worth considering. But I do want to put these cameras in three separate categories. So the Pocket 3, I would say it this is in its own category, which is more of that cinematic vlog style. And then we have the Ace Pro, the Action 4, the GoPro 12, and the Go 3S, which is more of that standard action camera. And the last one is the 360 action camera. So we have three different categories, which gives you three different experiences and three different use cases. Now, when it comes to low light, this plays a huge role for a lot of people nowadays because we like to shoot more videos with our cameras in low light. So here's a few comparison clips with all the cameras in different scenarios.
And when it comes to photos, this is also something we do more with our action cameras. We like to take photos because it's more convenient. So here's a few photo comparisons between both cameras. And as of audio, this also plays a huge part in which camera you might end up buying. My recommendation is always to get the DJI Mic 2, but if that's out of the budget, here's what the different cameras sounds like. So this is the audio coming directly from the internal microphones on the X4 and the audio settings that I'm using is stereo. So how does this compare to the Pocket 3? So this is the audio coming from the Pocket 3. How does this compare to the X4? And this is also only the internal microphones set to auto and I'm holding it about an arm's length away from me. And this is the audio coming from the Action 4, also shooting normal color profile with this one with 10 bit and uh, using the internal microphone. So how does this compare to the other cameras? Also holding this in about an arm's length away from me. And then we have the GoPro Hero 12 shooting wide 5.3K resolution at 30 FPS. And GoPro is known to have some pretty good internal microphones. And this is the audio coming from the Ace Pro. I'm using the standard color profile, normal video mode and everything is shot in 4k 30 fps so how does the audio sound coming from the ace pro and i'm also holding this uh, in about an arm's length away from me and then we have the go 3s shooting 4k 30 fps using the standard color profile sharpness a little bit unsure what i set this to but i think it's set to low and what i really like about the go 3s is of course 4k and that we have the action pod still so i'm able to clearly see myself and easily frame me myself how i want which is really convenient with such a small camera but how does the audio sound compared to the other cameras and the last one up is the Insta360 X3. Everything is set to auto. We have the standard color profile and also 5.7K at 30 FPS. So how does this look and sound compared to the other cameras? I'm shooting here in the garage now with the pretty bad lighting. And uh, yeah, so how does it sound and how does it look uh, compared to the other cameras? Let me know in the comments below. Now, when it comes to versatility and use of all these cameras, they basically all fit in your pocket and can be mounted in all different places. However, the Go 3S has a huge advantage with its magnetic backplate and the small form factor, which allows it to be placed in all kinds of places without needing additional mounts or accessories. And when you buy the Go 3S, you also get everything you need, so you don't have to buy additional accessories to fully benefit from the camera. Now, the Pocket 3 is probably the least versatile camera because it has a mechanical gimbal, which is quite fragile. And it's also limited to how far it can tilt and rotate, which means it's the only camera without horizon lock. But I would also say that the Pocket 3 is more of a cinematic high quality camera device meant to shoot exceptional good looking cinematic videos or vlogs, rather than being aimed towards the most versatile camera. And for the remaining cameras, they can all be mounted in the exact same ways, either by using the GoPro feeds or the quarter inch thread on the bottom. Now, when it comes to actual real life use, there's not a huge difference between these cameras. However, the Pocket 3 has that mechanical gimbal and I've actually found myself adjusting this a little bit more in order to get the shots I wanted compared to the other cameras, which has a fixed lens that don't move. But the actual differences and the things that separates these cameras when it comes to versatility is definitely the 360 videos and for some the quality differences between a 360 video and a regular action camera or the pocket 3 for example is huge and the reason you go one way over the other and for others the differences aren't that big but as a versatility nothing beats a 360 camera because it records everything without having to do anything and this in combination with the invisible selfie stick makes it the most versatile camera on the market and with a 360 camera you have endless options of how you want to 
frame your shot and there's no limits to what you can do. And no matter how you hold the camera, the selfie stick will always be invisible. And not to mention that these 360 cameras does also have a single lens mode which shoots 4K videos and you can basically use this to get that regular action camera point of view if you want to do that. So you basically get two cameras for the price of one which is also something to consider when you're looking to buy a new or your first travel camera. Now, when it comes to features, they all have the same basic features like pre-record, time capture, loop record, photos, videos, time-lapse, hive-lapse, and slow motion. However, Insta360 takes the lead here with some additional features like a free frame video and HDR, which you also find on the GoPro, and also the Ace Pro has that dedicated low light feature called Pure Video, which is similar to the low light feature on the Pocket 3. The Ace Pro does also have a dedicated 2 times lossless zoom feature in 4K, which allows you to zoom in 2 times in 4K without losing quality. And this is one of the best features I've ever used when diving or snorkeling. It's just fantastic. However, the Action 4, the Pocket 3, and the GoPro Hero 12 are the only three cameras that shoots 10 bit in all color profiles. For social media and the compression done after you've uploaded your video, 8 bit versus 10 bit doesn't really matter that much. The there is of course a difference in how you color grade and tweak your image, so with 10-bit you'll be able to get more dynamic range in the highlights and shadows versus the 8-bit. And for my personal use and from what I see when I color grade and adjust the footage, the differences is not that significant when it comes to uploading videos here to YouTube. So for me personally, I wouldn't grab one over the other just because it has 10-bit, but rather the versatility and what I'm able to capture with the camera. Now, battery life is always a question mark when it comes to these cameras, and we all want as much battery life as possible, and the short answer is that all these cameras can record for at least one hour straight, even the X4 in 8K resolution. And over the past few years, I've done so many side-by-side -side comparisons here in the studio, and all cameras have given me about 80 to 90 minutes of record time in 25 degrees Celsius. But as soon as you take them out, the environment will change, and if you put any of these cameras on a motorcycle for example none of them will ever overheat because it has that airflow and if you do a hike for example with moderate winds none of them will overheat if you shoot a time lapse none of them will overheat either because time lapse is a different feature and a different shooting mode than normal video mode but out of all these cameras, the only problem and the only issue I've had with the camera is the GoPro Hero 12. And I think since I got this, it has overheated more than 15 times. And the reason could be that GoPro is still using old technology. So even the GoPro Hero 12 has the older processor from the GoPro Hero 10. But when it comes to normal shooting conditions, there's not a huge difference between these cameras. And it's always better to grab a few extra batteries anyway, instead of having to worry about battery life. So the short answer is that none of these cameras will overheat from normal use. Now, when it comes to user experience, all cameras are easy to use and all cameras have an easy way to change between horizontal and vertical shooting modes, for example, either by changing the aspect in camera or by mounting or holding it in a vertical position. So the Action 4 comes with a cage that allows you to mount it vertically. The GoPro 12 has a built-in feature for changing aspects if you want to shoot uh, vertical videos, or you can even use 8x7 and then crop later in post. And the Go 3S has a built-in gyroscope so when you hold it in a vertical position, it will shoot vertical videos and when you hold it in a horizontal position, it will shoot horizontal videos. The Pocket 3 does also have vertical shooting mode by just rotating the screen, but here you're limited to 3K resolution, which doesn't really matter for social media, but 4K would be preferred. And for the Ace Pro, you can either hold it sideways to shoot vertical videos, or you can use the free frame video option, which gives you the ability to change the aspects later in the studio or mobile app. However, with a 360 camera, you can adjust as you want later in the app, and the position of the camera is completely irrelevant. So you basically can everything at once and you don't really have to think about framing which is a huge benefit. And for motovlogging for example, the X4 has this huge advantage with the new intercom connection which allows you to easily start and stop recording with voice commands which stop means recording. no cables, no microphone setups, just run and gun which is fantastic. And not to mention gesture control which is another huge feature if you do motovlogs. 
Now, when it comes to normal day-to-day -day use, I'm definitely using the X4 more than any of these other cameras. Basically because it records 360 videos and for me, it's more convenient. And when it comes to traveling, I also see myself using the X4 more than any other camera. And prior to the X4, it was the X3. And this is mainly because I find it easier to capture videos. However, traveling between countries, the Go 3S and the Pocket 3 is what I prefer because it's more subtle and also lighting conditions plays a huge part which is why i'm using the pocket 3 even though the ace pro has this pure video mode i find the dlog m on the pocket 3 to work just as good in low light after some color grading and adjustments and when i'm traveling between countries you can't really beat the small form factor of the go 3s and now with 4k resolution as well and this is basically how i capture all my pov shots when traveling from one place to another and all other pov shots for that matter so for family vacations, the Go 3 or the Go 3S really depends on your needs if you need that 4K, but this is what I would grab, especially if you want those POV shots. And for the best bang for the buck, I would say the Action 4 Creator Combo with three batteries, the charge case, and the selfie stick. And if you add a DJI Mic 2 to this setup as well, you, you know, you have the most complete action camera available. However, you do lose the versatility which you get with the Go 3S and a 360 camera, but this this is more of a personal preference. I would choose the X4 over the full setup of the Action 4 because that's what I prefer for certain scenarios when I'm out traveling and sometimes I would prefer to use the Action 4 over the X4. The GoPro Hero 12 is also a solid action camera but it's still the only camera that freezes so the user experience from my point of view is not the best when using a GoPro. And when it comes to water activities which is like 50 50% of what I'm doing when I'm out traveling, the Ace Pro and the Clarity Zoom is amazing. To be able to zoom in underwater without losing quality has been a huge game changer for how I shoot underwater videos. Even though the X3 and the X4 is probably my favorite underwater cameras, the Ace Pro has a much better sensor, which allows me to go deeper into the water and still get amazing high quality shots. Now, when it comes to menu navigation, it's not really hugely relevant to a lot of people because all of these has that quick capture button, but when it comes to the menu navigation, it's easy to navigate through the settings on all these cameras. However, the GoPro 12 has the most steps and the least responsive screen. It's the camera that takes the longest to turn on and off. And out of all these cameras, I would say that this is, you know, the camera that has the least premium feel to it, despite having amazing image quality. And like I mentioned, all these cameras have that dedicated quick capture button as well, which makes it easy to record by just pressing the shutter button. And this is something I recommend using rather than turning the camera on and off manually each time you want to use it. And it's much easier and much faster. So when you press it, it will start record. When you press it again, it will stop record and automatically turn off. So it's a fantastic features that all these cameras have. Now, when it comes to durability and build quality, this is what matters to a lot of people, even though the most common way of using an action camera nowadays is for vlogging or documenting your vacation and not really action related uh, activities. From my experience, they have all held up pretty well and some have a few marks here and there, but none of the cameras have really been destroyed from normal use, even though I've dropped quite a few of them. I would also say that all these cameras do have exceptional durability for what you'll end up using them for anyway. However, the Pocket 3, because it has that mechanical gimbal is probably the least durable and the most fragile but again it's a completely different camera so it has a different use case but the gopro 12 action 4 and the ace pro can definitely take the hardest hits even though the x4 and the premium lens guard can take a pretty hard beating as well without being completely destroyed so the durability of the x4 is quite impressive and better than you might think but it does require the use of the premium lens guards but what really makes the difference here is that we do have the changeable lens guards or the lenses on the GoPro Action 4 and the Go 3S and the Ace Pro. So if your lens cracks, you can always buy a new one for less than $12. And when it comes to the X3, for example, you only have these sticky lens guards, which works good in some situations, but it doesn't really add that same protection as you get with the premium lens guards on the X. 
4. Now moving over to the app and software use. Insta360 is definitely leading in this area with the most intuitive app both for mobile and desktop. DJI and GoPro works fine but not something I honestly see myself using in the future as a replacement for Final Cut even though doing short form content is it's pretty straightforward on these apps. But with Insta360 mobile app, you can edit your videos manually, use AI or different shot labs features to create some different effects, which is pretty cool actually, if you just want something fast and simple for your social media. And to use the highlights feature on the GoPro Hero 12, for example, you would also need a subscription, which I'm not a huge fan of. This should be free in my opinion. And uh, you know, it just feels like a money grab from GoPro. Now, one of the most common or the most common question I guess asked all the time is, you know, 360 editing versus normal editing. So when it comes to editing 360 videos versus normal editing, normal videos from the Ace Pro, for example, you might hear a lot of people say that, you know, buy a normal camera because 360 editing is a pain and it takes forever to learn. So with normal videos coming from these normal action cameras, let's say the Ace Pro, you record a video and when you're done, you import those videos to your device and you start editing. Pretty simple and pretty straightforward. But you also have the same option, sort of, with the 360 camera. The only difference here is that you have more options. You can either enable direction lock and just export the video as it is, or you can reframe the video and then export, or you can use direction lock in combination with the keyframes or you can use the AI to make a video for you. So it's not that it takes much longer, it's just that you have so many options that it sounds like it's a lot of work. But let's take this clip for example. First I'll enable direction lock on the right side, then I'll make the adjustments on the screen to whichever I want. So let's uh, say like this. Now the only thing I have to do is to make a keyframe at the beginning of the video and the angle will stay consistent like this throughout the entire video because I have direction lock on. The next step is to export the video and that's it. So now we have a clip which is looking just like a regular action camera but the difference is, is that this is recorded in 8K with a 360 camera. And let's say you want to track something, for example, which is only possible with a 360 camera after you actually recorded the video. Even though the Pocket 3 has tracking, you can only track there and then. But with a 360 camera, you can go back and track whenever you want, what you want, uh, however you want, as many times as you want. So that's the huge benefit with a 360 camera again. So let's track my son here. First I select the deep track feature, and then I simply just drag a box around my son and then hit track. And that's it. And if I want to track something different, I can just delete the current tracking and then select something else and then just press track again. So the process is of course a little bit longer, but it's very easy. And to be honest, I think this process is more fun because you have all these different options, all these abilities to make your video look unique. But at the end, it really depends on what you're looking for in a camera. So the GoPro 12, the Action 4, the Ace Pro and the Go 3S are all solid action cameras which has better image quality compared to a 360 camera. And if you know exactly what you want to film and don't want that extra versatility you get with a 360 camera, then either of these cameras would be a good buy. But if you don't mind spending some extra time on keyframes, well in reality you actually don't have to spend that much time on keyframing either because you have features like direction lock which keeps the lens or the framing consistent but if you're looking for a camera that has unlimited framing options and the ability to hide the selfie stick in your shots then the X3 or the X4 is the camera you should get. It only comes down to what you're willing to pay for these cameras and if the X3 is the better option right now because it's on sale. But I'll leave some X3 videos down below in the description for you to check out before you make your decision and I also have X3 and X4 cheat sheets down below there as well which is insanely popular and I can't thank you guys enough for picking up a copy so if you're looking to get some help some guidance when you're out shooting your 360 videos check them out down below. So with that said I think that's everything for today's video all the links to every single camera will be down there as well and I'm also curious to know your thoughts on these cameras and which one you would prefer and on your way down there make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next a video so with that said let me know your thoughts thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye